G'day guys, Luke here. Welcome back to another video. In today's guys, we are doing the January update for 2024. So this will be the mega tour. So the two rooms that I have will be combined to this one video. So this will be the one-off for the year, guys. Otherwise, throughout the year, with its own separate videos. So this is the new year. Let's make a mega video for uh, for the starter. And then we go from there. So I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. However you guys celebrate the holidays. That's why everyone had a Happy New Year and was staying safe and being responsible. I know it can be quite easy to get carried away when you're partying, but hope everyone out there is doing just fine. Other than that, let's get straight into it. First critter of the Raptor room we're going to start off with is Dusty. Now, Dusty here is my black headed monitor. It's doing quite well, other than the fact he's not really eating off tongs for me, but that's okay. We'll work on that this year. He's doing just well. When I do put food in his enclosure, it always seems to disappear, so he's mostly eating, plus he's quite. Quite chunky, he used to be a bit skinnier than that when I got him. So he's gaining a bit of weight by the looks of it. Might weigh him soon just to keep an eye on his weight. Other than that, he's doing just fine. Hanging out in his favourite spot, which is legit right there on the light bar. So Dusty here is housed in a 140 centre enclosure. So just shy of being 5 feet. In his enclosure, we've got a very fine grain of sand as his substrate. A couple of hides they can use if he wants to do so. Since he's more of an arboreal species, like what he's doing right now, there's heaps of branches in there from the climb up one. There's fake plants and a couple of other ornaments in there to decorate the enclosure along with a backing, food bowl and water bowl. And the heat and UV that I use is, for the time being, I've got these info projectors in the enclosure. I've had them, have them in about a year now. Uh, I might swap them out for ceramics later on. You know, so I've heard a few things about these heat projectors as of late. So I'll, I'll do a bit more research and make my call. I might say UVB, uh, these LED uh, UVB light bars from Get Your Pet Right. Love these light bars. Bit expensive, but I might do a video on these down the road uh, explaining it, these in more detail and why I like them over light tubes and light bulbs. But uh, they'll be probably a few months away. Anyway, I'm keep yip yapping. So, good old Dusty. Below Dusty, in pretty much, well, it's the same size enclosure, it's just set up differently. We've got Akko. Now, Akko here is my female Eastern War Dragon. She's a bit of a mood lately. A um, couple of things happened that have changed in our lives, which she doesn't really appreciate change. She doesn't like it. So she's a bit upset with me at the moment, aren't you, girl? Yeah, she's she's uh, not happy. So in the enclosure, guys, we've got coconut fiber as a substrate. We've got a hide. We've got her uh, rog, uh, sorry, logs and bits of wood in there for her to bask on or sit on. Got a hammock. The heating UV, the backing, food bowl. She's got a diva sign just at the back there because you are a diva. We've got our rocks for her to get in and out of a water bowl, fake plant, and said water bowl's just there. She's a funny bugger though. Below her, we've got Monty and Anastasia. Now, these are my pair of Shinglax. Don't know if they will breed, but I'm not really too worried about them if they breed or not. Uh, they're just cute animals to have. So these two are housed in a 120 cm enclosure, so four foot. They're doing quite well, and actually, even though they're quite large bodied animals, they seem to do just fine in this size enclosure. In the enclosure, we've got a nice big hide for them to sleep in. Well, Monty sleeps in it, and it's actually goes in the log now. So they must have had a disagreement about something. Even that, and it's actually wants, wants some time alone. There's a ramp for them to get on top of that hide, and that log hide I just mentioned, backing. Water bowl, food bowl, and we've got the LED light bar and a ceramic in here. The heat projector wasn't doing enough of a job to keep this enclosure warm. So I put a ceramic in there and it's kicking butt. So I'm happy how that's going so far. To the next rack system, we've got Crystal. Yeah, she's right on cue. So Crystal here is my pygmy or black soil dragon. She's doing all right, uh, other than the fact that she's also not a not very happy with me lately. She's... um. Been arcing up and whipping me with her tail. Uh, other than that, she's doing just fine, trying to break loose. There she goes. Other than that, she's fine, smashing food as normal. So she's housed in a three foot or 90 centimeter enclosure. So in the enclosure, very fine grain of sand. I know people go mental over the sand, but hey, I haven't, I haven't had any dramas personally. As long as you're using the right sand, you'll be fine. It's the beach sand, a very coarse sand, so you'll watch out for. This one I'll use is quite like a powdery sand almost. A uh, very uh, small grain of sand. So I don't want to hear about any sand in the comments. 
So, we've got a couple of ornaments in here for her to sit on. So, one underneath her heat. Got her UV, her backing, hide. Even though B Dragons don't really need hides, I find, I have found Crystal does better having one in there with her. During the winter time when I do brute mate her, she goes in there and sleeps. So, it's kind of a good cover for her. And we've got a food bowl and water bowl there. So, basic, easy, she's happy. Below her, we've got Sui. Now, Sui here is my sand simmer. Just got a new backing for Sui, so it looks more like they're straining that back. Might add a bit of red sand in there just to decorate the enclosure later on. Uh, just gotta be careful which one to buy, because I have heard some red sands have been dyed, and I won't mention company names, which I don't wanna get in trouble. Now, it's all about finding this lizard now. You would think a 25 centimetre lizard should be easy to find in this 50 centimetre enclosure. No, she's not in there, in there. Well, oh, no fishy. So, while I'm trying to look for her, she's... So, Sui is a centimetre, like I mentioned. She's got a heat pad underneath this corner here. Is she in the hide? No, where? Oh, no, where is she? I hope she hasn't gone in here. That would be good. Oh, there she is. Before I dig her out. So we've got a heat pad on this side, two hides, a bit of bark that she can actually hide underneath, a fake plant, wood wall, and then she, she shares a live strip with her neighbour, who we'll get to in a minute. Right, let's say hello to Suey. Come on, girl. There she is, and there she goes. So, didn't really get to see her much there, but let's try again, and then I'll figure this later. Hey, girl. The light is a bit of a pain, but sorry, guys. There she is. So she's a beautiful little skink. Even though I don't see her all too much. Um, I reckon they're a pretty interesting species to keep, even though they're not that entertaining. All you do is chuck food in there, and sometimes if you don't let the surface like that, they'll pop up and grab the food. So that's Suey. Close that up. This little guy, here's Valentino. Now... Valentino was actually the first baby children popping over bread. Uh, so I still got his parents with me today, and since he's the first ever baby I had, I decided to keep him. He's a good little fellow, even though he's very food motivated, and he does bite me from time to time. He yeah, doesn't mean any harm. He's just a little little snake that's growing up. He'll probably get an upgrade soon, because he is a bit big for this cage, but he's fine in here for another two to three months, I reckon. So his house and the 50 cent enclosure are pretty much the same size as Suey, same model. So a heat pad on this side, got his coconut hide, a foam rock I'll put in there on top of another couple of smaller pieces so he can go under that. The backing that Sue used to have is down on his enclosure because he's, like I said, he will get upgraded and have a better cage down the track. And he's got a nice big water bowl in there with a couple of branches. Nothing too much on the little Sue there. Below them, we've got my geckos. So in here we've got Charcoal and Luna, who are my two... Eastern Spinetail Geckos. So in their enclosure, guys, we've got the heat pad. There's three hides in there, branches for the climb up on. A nest box for Luna for the egg laying season. Water bowl, fake plant, backing, heat pad. And the, a light just to display the enclosure off. Now, Luna's just over here. She likes to hang off the side of the glass. Come on, darling, come out, come over. There she is. I did successfully get one clutch of eggs from these guys this year and I had a couple of babies. They've since been moved on to their new homes. Hey, good. So, and the boyfriend should be, yep. There's charcoal. As normal, he'll be up on it there. Both geckos are doing well. I find Luna is a very confident little gecko, always out in the open, like so. While charcoal, the male, I re re pretty much don't really see until midnight. But yeah, great little geckos. If you guys ever get a chance to get a hold of them, especially if you live in, in Australia, uh, so I really do suggest these guys. They're not a bad little gecko to keep. So yeah, that's this side of the room done. We'll cross over to the other side where there's the majority skinks. We'll start down here with Pedro, who is my little pink tongue skink. I don't want to say little. He's gotten quite big lately. He has a two-foot enclosure. Before I do drag him out, he's knocked over a few things from last night. So he's got two hides, food bowl, water bowl, substrate, a backing that there's a cave incorporated into it for him to hide in, and just a hidden meter in there to keep him 
nice and warm. There he is, doing exceptionally well. Uh, handling wise, he still needs to be worked on, but saying that, he's a good boy. Eating a lot lately, which is good. He's happy, he's content. I'll finally figure out what works for him best after having him over a year now. So, nothing too exciting going on with Pedro. So that was Pedro, guys. Even though it's not much of an update on him, I'll be honest, he doesn't really do much. I don't see him often. So, yeah. Now, onto the last four animals of this room that we move over to the snake room. We've got three eastern blue tongues and a blotch blue tongue to check out. What we'll add it, what we'll do is just use Bose enclosure as an example, because pretty much three of the enclosures are pretty much the same. So Bose enclosure, blues and billies are 120 centimetres, so four foot. Each enclosure, we've got the coconut fibre as a substrate, a hide, some kind of ramp from the get on top on top of the enclosure, sorry, the hide. Got that backing, heating UV, feed one water bowl, that's about it. Um, so Bluey and Bo have the heater meter, while Billy has a heat pad. So he's Bo, he's doing pretty well. Looks like he's going into a shed, he's kind of that milky colour at the moment. He's a pretty easy going blue tongue, never have any troubles with him. He'll come out, get some heat, some UV, something to eat, then he goes back in his hide, sleeps. Same thing with Bluey over here, so give an idea. Bluey's cage, pretty much identical. He's just sleeping at the moment. Hey buddy, how you doing? So Blue's doing exceptionally well. He's been trying to borrow into the substrate as of late, so he's kind of cut himself in a bit of dirt. But overall, um, he's a pretty cheeky blue, pretty cheeky little blue tongue. Um, very, I would say he's very easy going, but he'll come out and just cruise around and close. He doesn't really care what's going on. But he's a little bit more shy, while Blue's got a bit more confidence in him. Below them, we've got the youngest of the three. So this is Billy. She's only a few years old. Billy here was a rescue for work. Hey, hey, you okay? Very gently pull you out. She's probably the biggest of the of the three since we have in the family. There she is. How you going, gorgeous? So she was a little runt, pretty skinny. Uh, her survival chances were pretty slim, but we. Uh, we're able to nurse her back to health and she's a great little blue tongue. Very shy, doesn't really like being handled, often just sleeps in her hide. And she'll come out, have some food, then she'll go back in her hide and we won't see her much. She just went through a shed cycle last month, so she's looking very stunning for this video. So yeah, that's it for the lizard room. We'll pop over to the snake room and check out everyone else in there. As I was editing the video, I totally forgot about little Blaine. So Blaine here is my little lowland blotch blue tongue. She's pretty shy for a blotch blue tongue, but saying that, today she doesn't seem to mind too much about things in life. So it's good to see her out and about. So she's housing a 90 centimetre enclosure. In her enclosure, have got two hides, and she's more of a shy animal. She's got a heat, UV, backing, a ramp, food bowl and water bowl, and the substrate she uses is coconut fibre. Anyway, guys, we'll carry on to the snake room now. Sorry, Blaine, I completely forgot about you in the video. Anyway, we'll start with Charles, who is my our Bruno Dark Carpet Python. She's doing well. By the looks of it, she's in shed. Her yards are quite dull, so looks like I won't be feeding her today. So she has in a three foot or nine centimeter enclosure. In the enclosure, we've got her substrate, which is the coconut fibre. We've got two hides, a couple of ornaments, a water bowl, her hammock. We've got a backing, her heat, and then just a light strip in there to display the enclosure nicely. I'm looking at redoing this enclosure, just making it a bit more nicer, a bit more, I guess, natural for her. But the good thing is, since we put her in this enclosure, she's been eating more regularly than she was in the full foot enclosure. Next door to her, we've got the two oldest snakes in the family. Silverstar and Graham both just turned 14 not too long ago. So, they get into that stage in their life. I'm saying that they've still got a few years in them left. Let's say good day to them. So Graham, he just shed her skin not too long ago, and she's in food mode. Superstar, he is in shed, so don't know if she'll eat as well, but usually she does. If rarely, Superstar will miss a feed. I've just been careful. I do trust these two snakes a lot. Having them for 14 years, I haven't been bitten by them for about oh, eight or so years. It's been a long, long time, so it's all good. 
But in the enclosure, guys, they have, well, should mention, don't ever have, three foot enclosure or 90 centimeter. They've got three heights to choose from. They've got the branch. They do have their fake plant, a couple of ornaments in there just to have their shed, their skin, substrate, water bowl, heat, display lamp, the backing, which I'll probably put a better one in there later on. But yeah, pretty basic, pretty easy for them guys, and that's what they prefer. Down here, we've got Chappie and Orchid, who are my two central carpet pythons. I had to downsize them a couple of months ago due to Chappie being sick. He has recovered, but I'm hoping he will eat later today. Uh, Orchid, there, she's probably ready to eat, but saying that by looking at her eyes, she might be going into shed, so it's kind of, oh, how we go, see how we go. She laid a clutch of eggs and all beautiful white eggs, no slugs. Uh, the cooking nicely at the moment so fingers crossed so these guys used to be housed in a six foot enclosure but put a divide in there now to make it only four feet so 120 centimeters now so i went from 180 to 120. Now i might end up putting them in a proper 120 later on um see how we go you know, i'm still thinking about it at the moment but in the enclosure guys we've got the substrate some of the less box material got out while orchid was preparing the lay so it's given a bit of a mixture of coconut fiber and sphagnum moss, which is all dried out by the way, so no humidity. Two hides, water bowl, backing, look at the heat. You know, I put a UV light in here just to see if it'll help with Chappie recovering and hopefully get him to eat. So fingers crossed, been the new year, here will eat. And a couple of fake plants to decorate the enclosure. Below them too, we've got my two diamond pythons. Now I've got to keep an eye on on Atrum, uh, she's acting a bit funny as of late, but like I said, see how we go. Keep an eye on her, and if things don't seem to look that nice, then they also got to be downsized. Uh, even though regulations, I would say regulations, but guidelines say for two carpet pythons, 180 centimeters is the smallest you can technically put them in. However, things can happen, like with Chappie there, put them in too big of an enclosure, they do stress out. So maybe that is coming to happen with these two now for some reason so atrium is on on watch already over there doing just fine smashing through and being a trouble maker i won't stick my hand in there because he'll come flying out and bite me and i don't want that happening on camera so in there close you guys two hides got a few branches well a couple of branches here from the perch on a water bowl fake plants uh, fake plants backing um then the led uvb light bars in here and the heat so we're looking at probably possibly downsizing these two as well so that's something i've got to think about to the other side of the snack room guys we've got an 80 centimeter enclosure a one meter enclosure so just below and over three foot another pair of 180 centimeter enclosures the six foot we'll get to these animals in a minute so in this one over here we've got my pair of children pythons Azula laid a clutch of eggs. If you guys don't follow me on this Instagram, you probably wouldn't have known. But, uh, she laid a leg, clutch of eggs. A bit of a year right there, just take that out. And unfortunately, out of the, I think, 14 eggs we've had, nine of them went off. So I've got five good eggs still cooking away. So hopefully they'll hatch out. But Azula's this beautiful girl there, just hiding under her boyfriend. So this is Emma. He's a, he's all the cheeky one out of the two. Um, hey, Azula. There she is, we can see her beautiful little head. After laying the eggs, she's recovered nicely, she's eating food, has a skip the beat. And both of these things look like are both in shed, so who knows if they will eat as well today. But uh we'll find out later. We've got a backing, a couple of branches for the Gomon, even though they don't really use them. We've got three hides in that corner there, they've got a heat pad keeping them nice and warm. We've got the coconut fiber as a substrate, fake plant. And there is a couple of rocks in here just to help shed his skin. So that's them too. And they share a light strip with half of the animals. So, yeah. In this enclosure here, we've got Aaron Sinkers, who are my two female children pythons. Before we get to them, they've got three hides to choose from. They have their own little personal favourites. A couple of fake plants in the enclosure, which one of them pulled down last night. A couple of branches to climb on and a ledge that they both actually use, surprisingly. Look at the heat, the light strip, coconut fibers, a substrate, water bowl, and a couple of rocks just to help them shed their skin. So, over here, 
This is Aaron. She's a sweetheart, never really a, a biter, even though one time she did get a good hold of me. But uh, she means well. She laid a clutch of eggs a couple of years ago, but didn't breed her this year. Uh, I had too many babies last year to deal with, so it took a toll on me, on me. So I thought, just go fewer babies this year would be nice. And then over here, well, I've got a very beautiful snake of Snickers. You can probably just see her head just there. Doing quite well. These two girls I'm expecting from to eat later today. Hopefully. Let me know, guys, if you want to see a feeding video later on in the year, as that can be arranged. Below them, we've got Chris. Now, Chris here is my black-headed python. She's probably pushing eight and a half feet now, so probably close to two and a half meters. So this would be her forever cage now. Um, I thought me and my friends did think, you know, a four-foot enclosure was a bit too small for her. So I put her in a six-footer, and she's honestly just exploded in size even more. I mean, you're beautiful. A really well-tempered snake, but as soon as there's food in, in the equation, or you scare her like that, she might get a bit iffy. So, in her enclosure, I've got a substrate. We do have two hides in here, so one on the cool end, one on the warm end. We've got a backing, a fake plant. A branch I just added in there just to see if she would use it, and every now and again she will. Got a heat in that corner, like I mentioned. Got a light strip in here just to display an enclosure. So, what do you think about biting? Close this door before she thinks about biting the camera. So, and the substrate and water well, which I don't know if I mentioned. But yeah, that is good old little Chris. Well, I can't say little, she's huge now. <laughs> Hello, Chris. We've got a very naughty boy in the name of Ray. Now, even though this is technically my snake room, I do have a couple of little goannas in this room. So, we've got Ray here, who is my Rosa Megwana, and we've got Rosu. Ray and Rosie, yeah. So Ray and then Rosie, who we'll get to in a minute. Ray's just sleeping at the moment. He's like, ah, bug it is. I'm going to lay here and do nothing. The only time I see him move around is when he wants food. Or he wants to get out and uh, make a run for it. So he's a very cheeky boy. He's having a six-foot enclosure. He might be upgraded to an indoor enclosure soon. I uh, just want to put him, get some more size into him before we do put him outside. So we've got his cave. Couple of rocks for him to bask on, his heat right there. Couple of UVB light bars in here, a hammock, a backing that's pretty much already destroyed. A water bowl that I only cleaned this morning and he's decided to fill it up with substrate again. A couple of fake plants he destroyed. And a, a branch in there that he can walk up on. But I'll be honest, he doesn't really do it. He just wants to come out and cause trouble for me. That's that's Rosie though, he's a he's a funny bugger and we love him a lot. Ray. Did I say Rosie Ray? Anyway, I'm having a, a mental block. From one little goanna to a smaller one. This little character here is Rosu. Rosu here is my little rich tail mona. He's actually doing well. Out of the three goannas to do have, he's probably the most well behaved of the three. Uh, I can handle him, tong feed him a lot easier than Ray. Ray would get very really excited and try and bite me. But Rosu here is a very gentle little uh, rich tail. And hopefully, as he gets older, he'll become. Like a puppy dog in a way. This house has a 120 centimeter enclosure, so a four foot enclosure. We've got sandy substrate, a couple of branches in there for him to climb up on, a fake rock stack for him to sit on or wedge into, which is where I'm sitting on it at the moment, because that's where his heat is, nice and warm underneath the heat for him there. Got a couple of fake plants. Uh, there's a termite hide they can use to hide into. I wet their sand down in there for him, so there's a bit of humidity, fake plants, water dish. So yeah, he's a good little boy. Above him in a 60 centimeter enclosure, we've got Caesar, who's probably the most grumpiest snake we have in this household. He's a spotted python, so very, he's the same species as Super Saiyan Graham, but I will not be breeding him. Hey, buddy, you want to come out and say hi? He does look like he's got something to say hi, so he's a bit of a close up on his scales there, if the camera focuses. There we go. So kind of a no-show, but that's Caesar for you. So like I said, Caesar's housed in a 60 centimeter enclosure, in his enclosure. We do have a heat pad on this side over here. We've got three hides, so one going that way, another one towards the back, and one hanging from a couple bits of string or whatever. Substrate is coconut fiber, water bowl, a couple of rocks in there, fake plants, a backing, and a um, 
live stream day shares. By the way, I almost forgot there's an LED light button there for Rosie as well. So, anyway, that is Caesar. And up to the last two snakes of the Raptor room, we've got Willow and Diablo. So, both of these two are my brown tree snakes. This one here is Willow. She's a feisty young female. Uh, she kind of sustained a bit of an injury from a previous owner, but saying that she's healing quite nicely and trying to get her to eat is a nightmare. So, hopefully, today. Here's the day she behaves. So before we get to her enclosure, pretty much her and the elbows are very similar. So we just pop over to little Diablo. Looks like he's in shed as well. He's doing well. Out of the two branch tree snakes I've got, he's the calmest of the two. So polar opposites, but they're both cute little snakes. So if both of these guys they house in 70 centimeter enclosures so just over two feet in length give you a bit of a comparison between cedars and relays enclosure so about 10 centimeters is the difference in both enclosures you've got coconut fiber as a substrate you've got a heat pad to one end of the enclosure of each three hides on the ground well for willow that she's got three on the ground there was got two one incorporated into the backing speaking of which both of them have backings in their enclosures Couple of fake plants to decorate the enclosure, and also a couple of branches from the climb on, and of course a water bowl. That's probably one of the most important things is a water bowl. So that'll be it for this mango room update, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in another video.